Holy Spirit, thank you. We welcome you. We worship you. I surrender my mind, my spirit to you. Holy Spirit, I need your help. The little time we have left, make it impactful. Holy Spirit, be free to teach. Be free to rebuke. Be free to work miracles. Let the gifts of the Holy Spirit be in oppression. I pray that as I speak, let the word of wisdom flow easily. Word of knowledge. The working of miracles. Do only what you alone can do. I receive your mind to say to your people and let Jesus be glorified. Satan, you are bound in the name of Jesus. You will not divert our attention. You will not divert our minds. In the name of Jesus, the mind and the purpose of God shall be done. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking through me because we've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Some years ago, my wife and I, we went to Jordan. Jordan is a place that is very close. As an, a, if I, where we went in Jordan, from our hotel, we were seeing Israel, the next place. At, we just looked at Israel. Actually, a part of Jordan used to be part of Israel. A lot of people that live in Israel are from Jordan. A lot of people that are from Jordan are also from Israel. Hallelujah. So we drove to the border of Israel. And then we saw something that was very, that was very amazing. This is Jordan. This is Israel. When you look at Israel, you see everything green. You see a lot of green, 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 green. And then you look at the other side. It is desert. Savannah. Nothing. But on this side, it is green, 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 green. Hallelujah. So I was asking, I said, who, which, which place is that green place? Say, that's Israel. How can one, in the same vegetation, the same area, the same place, one place is green, full of green, green things, the other one is what? It's dry. So that's the power of the blessing. The power of what? Of the blessing. Hallelujah. The little time I have, I'm going to talk to you briefly on the dominion through the blessing, through the power of the blessing. Hallelujah. I've just started. I hope the Holy Spirit is going to. I've started Satan on Wednesday. Don't be a Sabbath, Sabbath Christian. Please come to church on Wednesday. But that's the only way. So, I saw the power of the blessing. You know, and I began, when you follow it up, this is when, you know, Israel's, the Israelites were, the Jews were thrown all over the world. I think it's 1930 or something when they decided to come back. When they came back to that land, it was all dry. It was all what? Dry. Everything was dry. But they believed that they carried something called the blessing. Which was also activated by the power that they keep the Sabbath. Because God blessed them. They came. There was, they, they came to a dry land, a desert. There was no water. There was nothing. But they what? They turned that place into a garden of Eden. Ladies and gentlemen, if they can turn that place to a garden of Eden, there's hope for Nigeria. I said there's hope for this nation. We will turn this nation around in the name of Jesus. But the world is not going to do it. It's the church that will do it. But something called what? The blessing. I mean, if you read the story, they said they, they got to the place, there was, no, there was no thing. They started looking for water. They were digging and digging and digging. They decided to do borehole. All the water they got could not be drunk because it was salty. But still, they made it. Hallelujah. You know what? Those water that could not be, they said that water, they started throwing it away. After some time, somebody said, this water is salty. Wait a minute. The people in the, um, the, what, the fish, they live inside salt water. So Israel began to raise, can you imagine, raising fish in a desert, sending it to London, sending it to Europe because of the power of what? Of the blessing. They started planting. Did you know that they were planting tomatoes, vegetables, so much that they fly them every morning to London from Israel? Because someone, because someone believed in the power of what? Of the blessing. Now let's take a look at that. 
When God created man, no, there are two forces actually that rules this earth. The blessing and the curse. Everybody say the blessing. blessing. Say the blessing. blessing. The blessing and the curse. The curse is, you see, and as Africans, we also know the power of the blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, as Africans, we understand the blessing. We understand the power of the blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, African does not, they know that you can have everything right and it will not work. That's why when, the, when their children are getting married, they say, let's bless them. They put blessing on them. Going there, everything will look right. Several people have, they don't, nothing is wrong with them medically, but they don't have children. Some, you can, some people have a good store, everything, shop, everything, filled, but nobody is buying anything. And some jagged jagged shop, the next time they are buying something from them. Because there are two forces that control this earth, the blessing and the curse. You know, when people are doing, I mean, when they are, they are graduating or doing freedom or anything they are doing, they say, they do special things. They say, let's put a blessing on them. You pray for them so that you know that you can have it right, but you, can, you may not make it. Because there is something called the curse. The curse is fighting against the blessing. Now, the idea of the blessing is not from man, but the idea of the blessing was from God. And quickly, let's follow, follow me through the Genesis chapter 1. You know, Genesis, oh my goodness, Genesis the first chapter. The Bible says, and let me, let me, let's take a look at this. In, in the, and God said, when God created the whales and every living thing, verse 21, after that, verse 22, God blessed them. So, say, be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters in the sea, and fall, and the fowls that multiply in the earth. So, God started the idea of blessing. Even when there was no curse, God put a blessing. And the Bible says, and God said to the beast, everyone should produce of his kind. Then in verse 26, let us make man in our own image. After our likeness, let them have dominion. Everyone say dominion. So man was made in the image of God. Hallelujah. The word image means to function like God. We were made to do what? To function like who? Like God. And God says, let them have what? Dominion. Everybody say dominion. God's will is that you should have dominion. But he says, let us make man, let them have dominion over the fish, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, over the sea. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. So God he didn't allow man to do anything without what? Blessing them. And he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have what? Dominion. So it is the blessing that creates the dominion. Hallelujah. It is the power of the blessing that creates what? Dominion. So without the blessing, there cannot be dominion. But when you carry the blessing, you have the ability to have what? Dominion. Are you following me? We are going somewhere. You have the ability to carry what? You carry, when you carry the blessing, you have the ability to have what? Dominion. God says, let them have dominion. Now, please, if you miss my Wednesday's teaching, please go out. On, the, on Wednesdays, we're going to talking about instruments for dominion. We started last Wednesday. We're going to continue this Wednesday. Instruments for dominion. Please go back and listen to it. Let me share this. It is not the will of God for you to survive. The will of God is that you should thrive. Hallelujah. God doesn't want us to survive. Economy may be hard, but you will thrive in Jesus' name. Hey, survivor. Ah, we are, ah, oh boy, how now? We are surviving, you know? Enough of we are surviving, amen? You will thrive. You will thrive. Nigeria may be hard, but you are going to thrive. I am, I've left the survival mode. Hallelujah. <laughs> because, you see, when you have dominion, you what? You don't, only you don't only survive, but you thrive. Hallelujah. The power of the blessing. You see, the blessing makes you to thrive even in times when things are hard. Hallelujah. So God put a blessing on them. You see, the blessing distinguishes you. Hallelujah. He says, let us make man in our own image. Our own image means to function like God. On, on, on Wednesday, I told them, I said, the children of Israel were in Egypt. Even while they were punishing them, they were still growing. They were still fruitful. They were still thriving. I declare to you, no matter what happened in Nigeria, you will thrive. 
Because you are a carrier of what? Of the blessing. The blessing makes you to thrive. Even in our times. But so the king oppressed them, but they are still fruitful. The king oppressed them, but they are still thriving. Hallelujah. Because they carry the blessing. But the problem comes because I said their first problem is because the, king, the enemy identifies. He says, these people are stronger than us. Let us deal with them. Let's deal with them shrewdly. That's Genesis chapter 1. So let's deal with them shrewdly. He says, if we can deal with them shrewdly, we will be able to overcome them. We will overpower them. But listen, they didn't know. I said, if they, they, they know that Israel were powerful, but Israel didn't know themselves. The first crisis for you to be able to thrive, for you to overrise dominion, is that you must understand, you must, you must, you must, they have identity crisis. Israel did not know who they are. And that's Satan's greatest weapon against the church. The Bible says, he didn't say, my people perish because Satan is strong. No, my people perish because we lack, well, they lack what? They lack knowledge. Because they don't know who they are in Christ. Now, this, this is exactly what happened here. But I said, let us make mine now what? In our own image. So you are made in the image of God. Everybody say, I'm made in the image of God. The image of, the act works that I need to function like God. You are made in the class of God to function like who? Like God. I want to say, well, what's Pastor Bukis saying? Jesus came in John chapter 10 verse 13 and says, ye are what? Ye are God's. Ye are what? Ye are God's. So we are made in the image of who? Of God. But when the devil came, he told them, he says, he says, Ah, if you this thing, you will be like who? Like God. They're already like God. They didn't know who they were. They were deceived. That's why they call it say they were deceived. Because they're already, they already like what? Like God. All they needed to do is what? Function like who? God. They're supposed to function. Man was the God of this earth. Were all the qualities that God, when he created everything that he spoke, when he was going to create man, he, Bible says he breathed into man. He dropped godliness into us. So God is inside. We are, you, you have the image of God. Now, why am I saying that? I say, ye are God's. John 10 says, Jesus said, ye are God's. The scripture cannot be broken. Ye are God's. It's also in, it's also in Psalm 82. It says, we are, you are God's. Ladies and gentlemen, what's peculiar about God? What was the function of God? Listen, walk, please walk with me. Walk with me right now. What's, the, what's important about God? God controls their circumstances. Their circumstances don't control them. God takes charge of their environment. The environment don't take charge of them. Look at, look at, look at Genesis 1. The Bible says, when in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So let's, let's make a reference. The heart was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the earth. The spirit of God was moving. Everything around God at that time was not good. It was not working well. But he took charge. And that is why no matter the situation of Nigeria, you will take charge. Until God took charge, nothing happens. So you have to use your authority and have dominion over your circumstances. Hallelujah. God, your environment, your circumstances must not control you. You control it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has given you the authority. You are, you are made to function like God. What did God do? He began to what? To speak. Began to so God created. If that's what the listen, listen to me, that's what the Israel, that's what they did. They went to an environment that is rot, rotting, run down. There has nothing, but they took control by the power of the blessing, and they took dominion over that uh, entire area. And today, the place is a, is a city. is a is like a garden of Eden. Ladies and gentlemen, that same grace is upon your life. Hallelujah. No matter what is coming up to Nigeria, you will thrive in Jesus' name. You will do well in the name of Jesus. You will not beg in the mighty name of Jesus. You will you not only survive, but you are going to grow bigger in Jesus' name. Gods don't, gods don't bind. They don't beg the environment. They take over. In the beginning, God created. You will create in Jesus' name. Everything doesn't like you spoke to it. And so God blessed them. So there's power of the blessing. The blessing. Everyone said the blessing. God told them, you see, when man sinned, God put a curse on earth. So the curse operates, the blessing operates. What is happening in Nigeria, in Africa, is that the curse is flowing. Hallelujah. Now, this thing is not just Nigeria, ladies and gentlemen. It's not only Nigeria, everywhere. 
I read something yesterday in Canada where people are running to. A lot of they say homeless has abound. People are living homeless. Did you notice that if you, if you follow the CNN, America, United States, thousands of immigrants are coming in. They are coming into the United States. They, yesterday, they said 15,000 was dropped in Chicago. They don't know what to do with them. They don't have house. They don't have anything. It's not where you live or what you carry. It's not where you live or what? What you carry. They are going looking for a better place. Actually, what everybody is looking for, ladies and gentlemen, let me submit to you this morning, is the kingdom of God. People are looking for what? For the kingdom of God. What's the kingdom? They are looking for a better place. Everybody that is Jack Barring going to this country, go to that country, they are looking for a better place. And that's the kingdom. The kingdom is your own. Because there is no place you go to that has the answers. There is no place. The only place that has the answer is the kingdom of God. People are looking for the kingdom. That's what they are looking for. Hoping for better government. There is no better government anywhere but the kingdom of God. So people are moving. But the blessing, you see, wherever the blessing takes you, you will prosper. <laughs> because the blessing works everywhere. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter where you are. The Bible says, so the curse began to move around the earth. And then God called the man Abraham. When he called Abraham, he blessed him. Look at it. The Bible says he blessed him. Look at Genesis chapter 12. And Abraham became the carrier of the blessing. God saw that, look, somebody needs to reactivate the blessing. He says, I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless you. Curse them that curse you. In you all the family of thee shall be blessed. You just see the word bless, 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 bless. So God put a blessing on Abraham. Hallelujah. The Bible says that it's not long after that. He told him, go to the place I will show you. When he got there, was there famine or not? There was famine. But the Bible says, in that time, even when there was famine, Abraham what? Prospered. Look at Genesis chapter 13. The Bible says, Abraham went up from Egypt. He went to Egypt. And he was looking for a prayer place. But look, chapter 12, I said there was famine in the land. Abraham went to Egypt to sojourn there. Abraham ran away because the famine was grievous. It was as bad as Nigeria. And it came to pass, you know, by the time he was coming out, his wife was taken, but God fought for him. Because that man is a carrier of the blessing. The Bible says, in Genesis 13, verse 2, Abraham was very rich. Everyone said very rich. In cattle, in silver, and in gold. During the time of famine. Because he was carrying the blessing. Your story has changed. Hell, your story has what? Has changed. When they say there is a casting down, tell them there is a lifting up. Because what you carry is different from what they carry. Hallelujah. When things don't work for them, it will work for you. That's Abraham became very rich. That man, he was, the Lord blessed him exceedingly. Hallelujah. It was the carrier of the blessing. You know, he went, to, he, went, he, went, he went to warfare. By the time he was coming back, he met a man called, I mean, Melchizedek, which was like Jesus. The Bible says, what did he do? He gave him tithes. And Melchizedek, he gave him all the wine and blessed him. Hallelujah. One way to activate the blessing is through tithing and giving. Hallelujah. And that Abraham was very wealthy. Now, I mean, if you look at the story, I don't have time. Go to Genesis 26. I'll just look at it because of time. You know, look at it. They are carriers of the blessing. Genesis 26. The Bible says, after Abraham died, Abraham left a lot of money for his son. But listen, he left a lot of money for his son, but family came as he became broke. It's not, what, it's, not, it's not the physical legacy you leave for your children, but what they carry is what is important. You can give them a lot of money and they will squander it. You can give them a lot of money and they will be, and the education, the curriculum, the environment, circumstances can destroy it. In Genesis 26, there was famine in the land beside the first famine in the days of Isaac, verse 1, days of Abraham. So another famine. Every generation there is famine. Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of Philistine. And the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Isaac, don't do it the way your father do it. It's not where you run to, Isaac. Prosperity does not come from abroad. It comes from above. Hallelujah. Don't go to Egypt. You don't need to run to Egypt. Thousands have gone to Egypt here. They missed it. They've lost their family, lost their children, lost this. I don't say, don't go if God asks you to go. But before you go, ask God, God, I say I should go. Because if you go to Egypt, you eat with Egyptians. <laughs> He went there, and the Lord appeared to him and said, don't go to Egypt. Dwell in this land, and I will bless you. So join in this land, and I will what? I will bless thee, 
and I will give the I will give all this country, I will perform the whole I've, I've talked to your father. God said, Look, you don't need to run anywhere. Stay here. And I will bless you. And verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Hallelujah. And the man was great, went forward and grew until he became very great. Can you put, any, can you put NLT there or NIV? The man began to, the, he became, well, everybody only say he became a what? A very what? Rich man. And his wealth continued to what? To grow in the land of what? Of famine. What makes the difference? Was the carrier of the blessing. He was carrying what? The blessing. Prosperity. Blessing. Increase. Does not come. It's not the country you run to, ladies and gentlemen. It's what you carry inside. Several people have run, but they are washing clothes, washing dead body, doing all sorts of things. Some other people have gone to and they are prospering. But ladies and gentlemen, it is not what you, it's not where you live. It is what you carry inside. And I want to announce to you this morning that you carry the blessing. You are a carrier of the blessing. This man Isaac, nobody could treat him. When everybody was digging, look at that, look at the other passage because of time. They were digging, they couldn't get water. Isaac was still getting water. They dug the first well. He, 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 dug, he dug the first well, he got water. The fleece came, they contest with him, he gave it them because it's a blessing. He blessed them, he left it for them. He dug another one, another well. They couldn't get water. Every, before that time, he got water again. The Philistines came and said, he's our well, he's our well. He gave it to them. Because it's not about the digging. It's what is inside. Hallelujah. The question is, you carry the blessing. You have to activate it. The blessing supersedes all forms of economic problem. Hallelujah. Did you notice that Abraham, when he was there, he had dominion. Hallelujah. How did he have dominion? Through the power of what? Of the blessing. Isaac in this land, I say, he had what? Dominion. I say, he became, he had possession, he had, he had servants. All the wells which he dig, he made. Look at verse 16. Hallelujah. 16 and 17. Can you put 16 and 17? And Bible says, And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go away from us, for you are mightier than us. Say, so You have become too powerful for us. That will be your testimony in Jesus' name. They said, This man has become too powerful than the whole nation. That's the, that's the story of Isaac. Because he was a carrier of what? Of the blessing. What you don't believe, you will never experience. And what you don't know, you will never believe. So ladies and gentlemen, believe. Everybody say, I'm a carrier of the blessing. <laughs> the same blessing came upon Isaac. I mean, Isaac died a wealthy man. There was famine, but the blessing had dominion through the blessing. What about Jacob, his son? He had two sons, Jacob. The story of Jacob and Laban. I just say that and then I just pray. Laban. <laughs> How many of us know that? Jacob ran away. Are you following me? He ran to a land. He didn't know anybody there. You know. But he was a carrier of what? Of the blessing. No matter where you are, when you carry the blessing to work for you. You know. He had, he had, he had, he had a boss that was very mean. You know, you know the story of Esau and Jacob. Esau sold his birthright. May you not say your birthright in Jesus' name. He was careless in spiritual things. There is a new we have to avoid spiritual carelessness. You cannot carry the blessing if you are careless in spiritual things. Uh, you go, you go, oh boy, you go to church all the time. You are not reading your Bible. You are not praying. The Bible says in Psalm 1, Blessed is he that sits not in his castle of the ungodly. You are always, you are always on social media. You can't, you can't activate the blessing like that. Psalm 1. Who, who, who does not follow the advice of the wicked, standing with sinners or joining with mockers. Because social media, they are, the, they are the one that's your Bible. They are the one giving you things. That's why I said, go and listen to the message on Wednesday. You are always sitting there. That's where you sit. Put an IV there. You are sitting with mockers. They tell you all the bad news of Nigeria. Let the one does not walk in the steps of the wicked or stand away with sin and take or sit in the company of mockers. If you are always on social media, you are sitting in companies of mockers. Because they tell you things. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you go is your, bio, is your, is your, is your phone and then you go and see the, the social media, what's going on, instead of hearing from heaven. You can't be careless with spiritual things. When you carry the blessing, you are ignorant about the Father. I mean, you may carry the blessing and it may not work for you. 
when you don't know. Jacob carried the blessing. And then he went to he went he went to walk. Esau was careless, so he missed the blessing. You will not be careless in Jesus' name. But Jacob carried it. But he went to work for Laban for several years. Nothing happened because he didn't know what he carried. He was oppressed. He was suppressed. Until you know what you carry to not work for you. The Israelites were in Egypt for several years. They didn't know that they carried the blessing. You have to activate the blessing. So I said, ah, don't mind Pastor Booker. He's just preaching. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not preaching. This is reality. Believe it. In Genesis 30, verse 27, Laban knew that Jacob carried the blessing. Go to Genesis 30, verse 27. He it says, it says, Laban began to get blessed. He was blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, in this time, you know some unbelievers are just getting blessed. They are getting blessed in this economy. No unbeliever has the right to get blessed. You know, you look at Jacob. What did he say? In Genesis, he said, but Laban said to him, Jacob said, I want to go after some time. He has, he has struggled. He went abroad. He has struggled and struggled. Nothing was working. But Laban said, if I have favor in your eyes, please stay. I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. You know what happened? Laban went to go and check it. Oh Lord, we'll share. Go on. You know the way they go and check something. He went to the Bible. Oh, those people say, this, this blessing, where they come, where they come. Laban said, now nah, Jacob, they carry him on. So Laban has been using Jacob's blessing. Today I decree, everyone using your blessing shall fail in Jesus' name. Everyone say, enough is enough. Somebody say it's not possible. That's, you just saw it in the Bible. The blessing was coming on Laban because of Jacob. See, I went to go and check by divination. Divination means they go to go and check. The Lord has blessed me. Because, so don't go. Let me continue to use your blessing. But Jacob says, okay, I'll wait. Now Jacob now reacts. Suddenly, something woke up in him. This morning, somebody's going to wake up in Jesus' name. That's why I'm here, to wake you up. I say, you are waking up in Jesus' name. I say, you are waking up in Jesus' name. You are waking up in Jesus' name. You will not take what you have been for. You've been taking before anymore in the name of Jesus. You are waking up. I said, this thing will not harass me anymore in Jesus' name. Everybody say, I may carry out the blessing. Say, enough is enough. In the name of Jesus, I will walk in the blessing. I will not be put to shame. Say, I will prosper. I will thrive in this nation. In the name of Jesus. Laban changed the wages. Now Jacob realized what he carried. And suddenly, he says, okay, if two, he says, okay, I will take the spotted gold. I will take the black and white. If Jacob will now, white and white gold will meet together and they'll still produce. They're supposed to produce white. But because of what Jacob carried, he began to produce black. <laughs> because what you carry is bigger than any situation. Jacob and Laban said, no, 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 I don't want that again. I just want, I only want black gold. I only want black goats. And he gave Jacob the other one. Jacob said, no problem. Now, black and black goat will meet together and they will produce white goat. Because that man carries the blessing. What is not working before we begin to work for you? Where people have missed it, you will make it in Jesus' name. Let me say this. No matter what the situation is, you will have dominion. Your dominion mandate will work now. Say, be fruitful. Replenish the heart. You will be fruitful in this nation. He says, in my land of affliction, I have been made fruitful. Those are the meaning of Jacob's son, uh, Joseph's name, son. You will be made fruitful in this land in Jesus' name. No matter what it is, you shall become fruitful. You will prosper. You will do well. In the name of Jesus. Let me close by saying that when you go to, Genesis, when you go to Exodus chapter 1, you can see the story all over. Jacob prospered. Joseph went to, I have no time. I've studied the blessing before. Joseph went to Egypt. He was put in prison. He prospered. He was a slave. He prospered. Before you know it, because he was carrying the blessing, he took over all the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. Everybody was coming to him. So, what you carry is bigger than this economy. What you carry is bigger than Nigeria. What you carry the blessing is bigger than sickness and disease. You can tell the devil today, say, enough of this harassment. Doctors say you will die. Say, I will not die. Because he doesn't know what you have eaten inside the body. They call it a jesara, what you eat inside the body. What you have eaten inside the body is the blessing. Hallelujah. 
the blessing will give you dominion. Hallelujah. The blessing will give you dominion. Hallelujah. The blessing will give you dominion. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 1, sorry, Exodus chapter 1, the dominion was, I mean, when, when they went fully, you know, they went fully. And Satan says, these people are prospering. Do you know Satan is afraid of you? Many of you don't know. Satan is what? He's afraid of you. He knows your potential. He knows the potential of the church. He knows what we carry. So he said, let us deal shrewdly with them. That's why Satan has been dealing shrewdly with us, t- telling us, you know. And so we have gone into economic slavery. We've left the world. I mean, we are not making it, but there's going to be a change in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of that, Genesis chapter 1. Uh, sorry, Exodus chapter 1. Pharaoh said, kill the sons and let the women leave. Kill what? Kill the sons and let the women leave. And I told them on Wednesday, I said, Satan still does not, why does he not want them to kill the sons? That's my conclusion. Why does he want them, why does he want to kill the sons? For one reason. Because in Galatians 3, one and two, if you put, was it Galatians four? It says, you see, Satan is afraid of sons, but he's not afraid of children. You can be in church and still be a child of God. You can be a children. That word son is oios in Greek. It's an adulthood. You see, a son does not come. In, in, in Hebrew land, there's, a, there's, a, there's an age your son will reach. You do a special ceremony for him and say, this is my son. You announce him to the world. That's what God did for Jesus. He says, this is my son. In whom I what? I am well pleased. You see, it's a God wants you to grow and become a son. When you become a son, Satan is afraid of you. Because sons are deliverers. Sons are, they, they make the blessing works. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, it, say, it says, as long as an heir, it say, as long as a lion is a child, as long as a heir is a child, it says, though he be lord of all, it says, he's still under tutors. Under to, I'm saying as long as the hair is under age, look at NKG, he's no different from a slave. Although he owns the estate, you own everything, but as long as you are a baby in Christ, you will be, verse, you will be under to talk. Not different from a slave, though he's the master of all, verse 2. Verse 2. But under guidance and stewards until the appointed time, go to verse 3. He says, look at verse 3. Even so, we were, when we were children, we were in bondage, under the elements of this world. As long as you are a spiritual baby, you be under the elements of this world. You cannot have dominion. You carry it. You have it, but you can't carry it as long as you are what? You are a spiritual baby. He said, kill the sons. He doesn't want the sons. So sister wants to keep it. So what do you do? For you to get into what God has called you, grow up. Everybody say, grow up. Say, grow up and become a son. Hallelujah. Grow up and what? And become a son. Well, what's, how, do you become, how do you grow up? You need to grow up. What does he do? Become a son, spiritual growth. Let's rise up on our feet. Sign. Let's rise up on our feet. We'll continue from there. Grow up. Psalm 1, verse 2. Verse 1 and 2. 1, 2, 3. Blessed is the man that walketh in the castle of, castle of the ungodly, that sit not the seat of scornful, but not stand the path of sinner. Not see the sin. But what is the line? Is the line is what? In the law of the Lord. And his law does he what? Meditate what? Day and night. How do you grow up? By meditating the word what? Day and night. And so, if you meditate the word, listen to the word, pray the word, hear the word. Because if you are hearing what is going on around here, they will depress you. But hear the word. Verse 3. What will you become? Look at verse 3. Put verse 3 there, please. You become like what? Like a tree. Planted by what? By the river's side. Whose leaves will not what? Wither. But say, a tree that is planted by the river's side, no matter what the economy is, that tree is growing. The tree is doing well. That will be your story this year. Amen. When people are saying there's a casting down, what do you say? There's a lifting up. I am not affected by the economy of Nigeria because I operate under a different economy. Hallelujah. He says, it shall be like a tree planted. But it doesn't come automatically. You have to learn to meditate day and night. That's why we say go to Bible school. 
Come and go to leadership training. Get the word inside of you. Satan doesn't want you to go. He'll be telling you, yeah, why are you coming there? He doesn't want you to grow. But you grow to a son. He can't handle you. Romans 8 says, the earth groaneth and cried. They are waiting for the manifestation of what? Of the sons of God. The earth is groaning, waiting for your manifestation. Waiting for your dominion. Why? Because only sons that can liberate. Enough is enough. Enough is what? Enough. This year you will prosper. Amen. You will thrive. Amen. Where people are missing it, you will grow up. Amen. Where people are going down, you are going higher. Amen. No sickness is strong enough to kill you. Amen. You will not die. Amen. That thing that shall be a reversal. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It will not end that the way the devil planned it in Jesus' name. Amen. In this economy, you are a carrier of the blessing. Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the loss that the blessing of Abraham can be upon us. You carry the blessing of Abraham. Amen. Therefore, you will prosper. Amen. You will go places in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is the least you ever be. Amen. Evil will not befall you. Amen. No plague will come near you. Amen. People may not find a way, you will find a way. Amen. Where people are not finding water, you will find water. When people are not promoted, you'll be promoted. When people are getting broke, you get richer. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say, I'm a carrier of the blessing. May you receive. See, I receive dominion through the blessing. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.